All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a very windy and cold day. Um, I have the Porsche Macan with me for a few more hours. So we're going to take it out for a drive. I've driven it a little bit already, so I've got a good idea of what it's like to, to live with. Uh, but I want to go through some of the features that I've found on it and some of the things that I like and things I don't like. All right, let's get on the road. It is freezing today. My my phone says it's nine degrees. Uh, I I think I'd have to debate that. I think it feels colder to me. But anyway, get the heated seat on. During this review, let's say, I'm probably going to refer to, I'm going to compare this car with my Kia. And the only reason I'm doing that is because that's what I'm currently driving. It's it's the SUV I've been driving for the last year or so. That's the only reason why I'm, I'm going to compare it. I know, I, I recognize that they're not in the same price point, but they are both an SUV. And I would say that for somebody who's been driving the Kia, like me, well, not like me, someone who's not necessarily a Porsche owner, who is thinking about buying their first Porsche, this could be the perfect car. Right, it's a entry level uh, Macan. It has the two liter engine, which was a derivative of the engine found in the Volkswagen Golf GTI. It has about 260 horsepower. It has the ability to take this vehicle to 60 miles an hour in six, just over six seconds, which doesn't sound fast by today's standards, but you have to remember, it's an SUV. It's not a sports car, right? Now this is the least expensive, I'm not gonna say cheapest, this is the least expensive SUV that Porsche make. So obviously Porsche made two SUVs, the Macan and the Cayenne, and this is the least expensive version of the Macan. So therefore, it is the least expensive SUV that Porsche makes. One of the first things I noticed when I got in, it was quite, I was quite high up. And that's normal for an SUV, you kind of sit perched up, you know. But I was able to adjust the seat and make it much lower so like i'm sitting now i have a gap there is a panoramic roof here with the covers slightly back but even with that closed there is space for my head there's plenty of headroom and the seat is not at its lowest point the the, the seating position in here feels more like a, a sports car rather than an suv which i really like because obviously from my point of view i love the porsche sports car but i also like the practicality of an SUV. So to be able to take the SUV and make it feel like a sports car is something interesting, you know? It, it, it's exciting for me. In, the, in a previous video, which I only had the car for a little while, maybe two hours, I referred to it as the two liter engine that was in the Boxster, and, and the, but that's not, that's not correct and I've already addressed that. But the, the, the power delivery in it is very smooth and I'm in auto right now and the, you know it's quiet in here it's ref it feels refined there's not an awful lot of outside noise mostly tire roar wow there's a Ford Capri parked on the side of the road there two litre gear wow <laughs> I think they might be filming there's two cars there I think they're filming I was surprised actually at just quite how much power there seems to be in this engine in this setup because although it's yes it's from a golf gti which is a fast car for its size and everything this is an suv so obviously it weighs a lot more than a golf gti but having said that drop it down a couple of gears and it picks up really well really well i'm, re I'm really impressed with the power delivery and the amount of power that this engine produces for this car uh, you know six just over six seconds to 60 when you consider the price point this this car is starts about just under forty-eight thousand pounds 
Uh, this spec, this one has got a very, let's say, adequate spec on it. it. Doesn't have any leather inside. I mean, it has a little bit of stitching on the door, but it's it's like stitching into plastic. The seats have got a little bit of leatherette and Alcantara. These are the base seats. The driver's seat is electric, uh, but like both heated. Um, but the passenger seat is manually adjusted. The spec on as far as the cargo has got the off-road system, which is standard. It has the uh, individual climate control, which is a must if you are in a relationship. Um, heated seats. Uh, it has a sport chrono. No, it doesn't have sport chrono, but it has the sport button. Um, I think that's enough for this car. Do you really need Sport Plus in this car? No, you don't. But if I was specking this car, if I was getting this model, then I think I would spec the Sport Plus just because of the extra performance the Sport button gives you in this car. And the Sport Plus would make it really nice. It's got Apple CarPlay. Uh, I, f I don't feel like there's leather on the steering wheel, multifunction steering wheel. Uh, if I was specking the car, I'd need to have more leather inside. It's just that I'm accustomed to it and it makes it feel a lot more refined. But, you know, I could live with this. That sounds funny, but, you know, I, I do drive two... I do have two Porsche sports cars, which are full leather interiors, so I would spec the leather just because it just makes the tactile feedback that you get nicer. But I have noticed that when I adjust the driver's seat, for me, when I get in the back, there is less room in the back um, than in my Kia. So I don't know whether that's something to do with the way I've got the seats set in here. Maybe I've got it further back because of the sports position, but there does seem to be more room in my uh, in my Kia in the back for, for someone the size of me sitting behind me, which is quite interesting. Anyway, put it into manual drop down a couple of gears and the power is instant I'm so impressed the way this car picks up is is fantastic when I, I made a previous video but like I said I had it for very little time and I only drove it on the motorway which is not a great way to make a video but I, I wasn't to know that I was gonna get this car again uh, so I did talk about the, the way that it picks up and stuff like that, but I didn't really have as much time to experience it as I've had this time. And I have to say, I think probably because I'm used to the way the Kia drives, it, I, am, I am constantly surprised with the amount of power this car has when I need it. I, I, and it is so impressive that it makes me think, would I really need to have a bigger engine in one of these cars? I, and I don't, th I don't think you do. I think you want to have the bigger engine. So, so this is a two-liter turbocharged engine, right? In the in the other models, the S and the GTS. So the lineup now is just this car, the Macan S, and the Macan GTS. The turbo is being dropped from the lineup. I think that's preparing us for the electric version, which will be in the next the next lot. The other two. Uh, versions of this car they have a three liter v6 twin turbo um, and the only difference between the s and the gts is the size of the turbo so you could in the future six six years down the road when you buy a mccann s you could just buy a couple of turbos from the gts model or an old mccann turbo and fit them and you've got a car with equal power to the model up because it's the same engine For me, I think I would still spec at least the Macan S because the engine is just that little bit more peppy. Um, it will have more torque and for me as an enthusiast, I think I would be happy or happier with an engine that is out of the box, has more power, but also has the ability to really, if I want to, to really uh, boost that power. Now I know that anybody who's, who's driven or owns a Golf GTI will tell me that they can boost the power of that GTI engine and get a really good amount of power out of it. And I, I, I recognize that. Uh, so you could do that with this. But the, 
obviously the two the small capacity engine is limited in comparison to that v6 also the v6 will have a better sound this does sound a bit you know four pot four potty <laughs> um so i think i would prefer to have the v6 um but if you are somebody who maybe wants to just get into the porsche brand but needs an suv is is, is used to a car that has you know um, a, a diesel engine like if you're from the uk or europe most of most suvs have diesel engines they did or they have small capacity uh, petrol engines now and i think this would be a big step up and you'd be shocked at the way it responds okay so the cars i've put the car in sport mode pdk is in manual um, at the lights i'm waiting for the lights to change wow it is impressive it really gets going i'm uh, i'm quite shocked at the way it picks up that's the first time i've done that uh at, with my foot planted in actual fact it wasn't quite planted uh but i think it was probably almost but uh yeah that is a fast car that, that moves like a sports car dynamically as well on the on when you're driving on the bends when you're driving a, a country road it is really impressive i do notice that when i'm accelerating the car does sound a bit uh, yeah i'm not a fan of the sound let's say the gts seems to me to be the best car to spec just because it comes with so much already a standard that by the time you finish specking a Macan S you'll probably find that the price difference won't be that much the GTS also because the turbo has been removed from the range the GTS now has the power of the turbo because it was the same it was the same engine in the GTS and the turbo same turbos they just had a, a 40 horsepower difference between the two vehicles and now that the turbo has been removed from the lineup the GTS has got that power so you got 440 horsepower from the GTS I'd love to drive one that that's the car that I'm probably going to end up getting so I'm going to go onto some smaller roads now just to experience it because the, the way it goes around corners the funny thing is because I'm because I'm, I'm used to the Kia the way it rolls in the corners you you can't take corners with any kind of any kind of speed or enthusiasm let's say but uh, in this car when I, when I get to a corner because I feel because I'm high up I feel like I'm in the Kia and it always surprises me when I do get to that corner how planted the car is and now I, I actually realize I've slowed down too much for the corner and it just picks up so well wow I'm so impressed but it, it, it feels like a sports car but I'm sitting you know so high up but this this thing it's it's so easy to drive it picks up so well the pdk gearbox is fantastic just like pdk in my in my spider and in my 981 before is a great gearbox i think i would get kind of frustrated with this because of the lack of exhaust note from it um that's why i would want the, the other car you can i would probably fit an aftermarket exhaust to it and um you know have the sound when you want it but as a cruiser and i can imagine driving this car down to italy would be a dream so yeah there's definitely one of these coming to my garage at some point all right so let's take it out of sport mode put it into automatic this is the great thing about a pdk gearbox is that when you want to drive it sportily you can And when you want to, to just uh, take in the scenery and not think about the gears, you can do that also. I'm definitely sold on this. I'll take it, don't wrap it, I'll wear it. And uh, where do I sign? All right, so uh, 
I think it's time to take this car back, unfortunately. So um, yeah, I'm gonna take it back. Uh, I mean, the good, the good news is when I do get back there, I get to pick up my spider. <laughs> also, I have um, some new merchandise from Porsche to pick up when I go to collect my car. So uh, let's go and check that out and, uh, uh, and you'll be the first to see it. All right, let's do that. All right, guys, so I'm back at Porsche Stockport. The weather has taken a massive turn. It, was, it wasn't great this morning, but now it's awful. So it's fully raining now. So you can see my car here. I've just dropped off the McCann. I have to say, I'm really sad to be given the McCann back. And uh, I'm hoping that I'll be able to uh, get one of those quite soon. Um, we'll, talk about more, we'll talk about that more in, a, in another video. But anyway, I'm gonna pop inside. I'm gonna get uh, hand over the keys, get my keys back, and I'm gonna get my merch and I'll show you what I've got. All right, guys, so I'm back home now. This is the merchandise that I was. I went to collect. I mean, obviously, I went to collect my car, but I also uh, ordered this on uh, when I dropped the car off. They didn't have any in stock, so this is a winter jacket, Porsche Martini racing jacket. Um, really, really liked it. Actually, um, tried one on the shop, and then they ordered this one for me. So yeah, just got it today. So I'm really pleased with that. It's a shame, I wish my merch looked as good as this. I don't have any merch, but uh, that's what I mean. I wish this was my new merch, but anyway, there you go. Right, so I'm, I'm home now, guys. I did film this at, the, well, I thought I filmed this at the dealership, talking about the jacket. And then when I got home, there's no footage on my phone, so I must not have pressed record. So yeah, it happens. Anyway, guys, um, I'm gonna leave it there. Uh, let me know what you think of the McCann. Um, let, you know, let me know what you think of the possibility of me getting a McCann, which one should I get? Um, and uh, I'll, we'll talk about it in the comments. All right, guys, thanks very much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.